Yeah. Okay, great. So let's try to learn how to play head. This is Johnny Cash's um, interpretation of this song. Okay, so look, on the verse we're going to have three chords: A minor, C major, and then D major chord. Okay, A minor, C, D. If you are not sure how to play these chords, visit my website. There are chord diagrams. Okay, so A minor is just normal regular A minor chord. I quickly go through this chords maybe with you. So my first finger is on the first fret second string. Second finger is on the second fret fourth string, and the third finger is on the second fret third string. We play this chord from the fifth string. This is A minor chord. This is our first chord, A minor. Yep. Then the next one will be C major. So we've got basically going from A minor to C major, you can just keep fingers one and two and move your third finger on the third fret fifth string. This is the C chord. But to play this from the scratch, kind of to build this from the scratch, you would position your first finger on the first fret. Second string, second finger on the second fret fourth string, and the third finger on the third fret fifth string. And we play this chord from the fifth string, this is called C. So we've got A minor and then C. And the last chord in this group will be called D, but you're going to play D sus2 here, okay? But let's try from the D at first, let's try from the D. So to play D major chord, I'm going to position my first finger on the second fret third string, my second finger on the second fret first string, and my third finger on the third fret Second string, we play this chord from the fourth string. This is how it sounds, and we call this D major. But in this song, we are going to use something which is called D sus2. So, suspended chord, D sus2. Look, to play D sus2 chord, I'm going to just lift up my third finger. So, what does it mean? It means that the first string is open. I don't have any finger on this string, but I play this string. D sus2. Easy to remember the name of this chord, this has two, is that um, you got two fingers. This is why it's called two, this has two, okay? It applies only to really to um, D chord, okay? So don't think about this as a shortcut to all suspended chords, but you can think about this has two as a two note finger, okay? Because the same applies to this has four. It's a quick lesson on suspensions. This has four is the same chord like D, and you put your pinky on the third fret. Um, first string. This is a very common kind of. Uh, very common chord progression, okay? By the way, if you want to learn how to play the guitar and you ever play the guitar or you are a beginner, I've got excellent course for the beginners on my website, okay? So check um, my academy section um, on my Guitar Couch website, okay? There's plenty of videos and uh, plenty of lessons, um, and um, you learn a lot. So look, we are going to have this as two chord, okay? This is how it looks, this as two. Now look, in this song we are going to do combination of arpeggios and strummings. So arpeggio, an arpeggio is just the chord, I've got A minor chord, and a chord that you would just play as a single note. So you don't play this all the notes at the same time, you just play this chord as a single note, so one note at a time, this is an arpeggio, okay? And strumming is like this, when you just strum this note, okay? So you go like this and it sounds, you, you can hear the sound of two or three or four or five notes, okay? So in this song you have combination of the, of the arpeggios and the strumming. So look, let's take our A minor chord and look, this is what's going to play on the A minor chord. So look, I start from the fifth string. This is my note A, we call this the root note. The root note gives the name to this chord, and this is something that probably bass player would play. This is why we hit this note in this song to kind of create very strong harmony, okay? So look, I go 5-4, so look, 5-4, 5-4. So my pick is going from the 5th to the 4th string, and then I'm going to do the strum, look, like this. Does it make sense? So look, 5-4 strum, 5-4 strum, and I've got all the time A minor chord. Now look, when you do this strum, it can be something like this, 5-4, and because your pick was on the fourth string, just strum rest of the notes, look, 5-4, and the rest of the notes from the third string to the first, yeah? So 5-4, like this, yeah? But also, you may strum this chord, you may add more notes like this. 
So I keep, I kind of go back side of the pig, look, five, four, and instead of going to the first string and strum, I go five, four, and I strum from the fifth string, for instance, okay? It's really up to you. If you'd play this song for a long time, you would start by playing just a few notes and then adding more to kind of more disharmony, more dance, okay? Uh, so this is really your choice, okay? Make sure that when you play this um, strum, that you play more than two, probably, notes. Because if you play two strings, it sounds a bit too weak, so it has to be three or four or more. Does it make sense? Something that really sounds, you give you this nice full sound of the chord, okay, of A minor chord. And now second thing when you play this arpeggio and this strumming, don't hit this notes very hard like this. Okay, try to hold this pick in a bit softer way, so more relaxed, look. Okay, here it's much softer sound. It's almost like the pick is gliding through the strings, listen. Very softly, yes, so look. In, instead of... There is always a place for kind of harder um, rhythm. But if you start from the very top, it will be very difficult to vary your dynamics. If you start in the middle, it will be always easy to um, go down, play softer, or play a bit harder. Okay, so never play this um, these arpeggios and the strumming too hard because um, it may not sound particularly nice. Especially that if you hit the string very hard, it may vibrate with such intensity that's going to hit the frets. Okay, like. You can't hear this probably, but <laughs> on the on the recording. But um, it's rattling, and sometimes students are wondering why does it sound this way. And simply, it's because you are hitting the string too hard with your pick. Okay. Second thing is if your fingers are not pressing firmly enough the chords, this is why also it may buzz a little bit. Okay. So there are a few reasons, but uh, one of the reasons why it may not sound good is because you play these notes too hard. So look, this is what you have: five, four, strum. Let's try this together for a moment. One, two, three. Four, five, four, strum. One more time. Five, four, strum. One more time. Five, four, strum. And one more time. Five, four, strum. Great. So we know what to play on the A minor chord. It will be all the time the same. So this is great news. Now let's go to the C chord. Very similar thing. We are going to play from the fifth string again. Five, four, strum. We are playing this again from the fifth string because the first note, the fifth string, with my third finger, this is note C. And my chord I'm playing is C major. So again, I'm playing the strongest note from the chord, the note that gives the name to the chord. So again, this is something that the bass player would play. Yeah, so this is why we're playing this note. So look, on the C chord, I'm going to go five, four, strum. So remember, five, four, strum can be three strings, last three strings, or five strings, or four. Just more than one or two notes, okay? Make sure that it sounds nice, like this. So this is how it sounds. Okay, so this is my C chord. And now on the C chord, um, I'm going to add one more note. Um, listen to this. So I'm going to add basically the bass again. So I play five, four, strum, five. Does it make sense? Five, four, strum, five. Listen how it sounds with the A minor chord together. And now C. Okay, this is what we need to add here in order to kind of recreate what Johnny Cash played on the recording. But now look, you can, if you are new to the begin, if you are new to the guitar, you are a beginner guitarist, you can always skip these notes, okay, and just play without the last note. It will also sounds good. Look, if I play this song now from the beginning without the bass note at the end, this is how it sounds. Can you hear this no bass note at the end? And now with the bass, listen. It kind of adds extra notes, which makes this a little bit more, more, more tricky because um, you've got less time to change the chords but it will enrich the harmony, okay? This is what will create this nice sound. So, um, as I said before, if you're struggling with adding this last note, this one here, try to skip this maybe, and then later on you can always come back and play this correctly. Don't forget you've got plenty of time to learn how to play the guitar. Don't rush, have fun with this, okay? 
you don't want to overload yourself with um, plenty of information, okay? So take things slowly, okay? And patiently. So on the C, five, four, strum, five. And then I'm going to the D sus two chord. And now I'm going to target this chord from the fourth string, and this is going to play. So look, very similar situation. We just drop everything down. So instead of playing five four strum, now we are going to start from the fourth string and I go four three strum. Does it make sense? Four three strum, look. And then again, I'm going to add the bass note, which is the fourth um, string again, because he's not D, so look. Can you hear? Five, sorry, four, three, strum, four, four, three, strum, four, four, three, strum, four. Does it make sense? Okay, great. So let's try this from the beginning, very slowly. Look, this is going to sound two, three, four. Again, the C. Okay, so this is how our intro sounds, or the verse. Now look, we start from the A minor chord, but as you listen to this song, listen to this. This is how you're looping this. It sounds like the A minor chord is really the last one in this progression, okay? Because once you loop it, you've got something like this. We start from A minor, and then we've got C, D, A minor, pause, C, D, A minor, pause. So really, the song starts from the chord C. It's a very common technique to kind of um, reverse the order by, by pushing um, last chord as the first one at the beginning to create kind of, again, interesting um, feel of the song, okay? So let's try this very slowly together. One, two, three, four. C major. Five four strum five D four three strum four A minor five four repose and again C A minor small pose and again C D so remember to target this bass notes, okay, this root note. So on the A minor chord, you would start from the fifth string. On the C, from the fifth string, D chord would start from the fourth, sorry, from the fourth here. Okay, this is how it works. So now you can, you can take these um, shapes and try to connect them together and practice very slowly, okay, in isolation. Maybe what you can do at first, just play every chord individually like this, look. Just A minor at first. And then you may take the C chord. And all time. And then maybe D chord. And then you can connect maybe two chords, let's say A minor to C, like this, look. And then C. And one more time, A minor to C, look. And then maybe you can go from C to the D, look, like this. So I kind of isolate um, each chord and I'm working in sections. This is a very good way of practicing the guitar. It will give you great, um, great results, but also um, it will ensure you that you know what you are doing in this song, okay? By deeply analyzing each section and practicing this in separation. Now look, now we're going to the code to the now we're going to the chorus, okay? We go on the chorus following chorus. We got G chord, then the next chord will be A minor, and then the next chord will be F at nine, and then we got C chord. And in all these chords I'm going to have my pinky on the third fret, first string. Um, later on I'm going to show you how to play about the pinky, just normal chords. But for now, just let's keep this pinky on, the small little finger, because this is what the piano is playing in the track. So we may recreate the same feel. This note, this little note here that you can hear across all these chords will create kind of continuum between the notes and make it sound really smooth and very pretty. Okay, so look, the G chord. To play the G, you position your first finger on the second fret, fifth string. The third finger is going on the third fret, sixth string. And now look, there are two ways of playing the G chord. 
one of the ways, both ways you'll have these two fingers at the top here. One and two, okay? So one of the ways will be to position your pinky, little finger, on the third, third, third string. And your second finger, sorry, your third finger on the um, third, third, second string. This is G. But also you can play the G when you lift up this third finger. This is also G. G, G. We call this different voicing. These are exactly the same two chords, just with different voicing. Because um, we can play the same chord in many different ways. Many people don't realize that you can actually take the chord and there's not one single way of playing the chord. For instance, a lot of people play A minor chord for a long time and they think this is the only way to play A minor. But you can play A minor here and also here, you know, and maybe here and here and here. Kind of different inversions, yeah? So there is more than one way to play the chords, okay? So this is what I mean with this G, that you can remove the finger and it's still G. Okay, so this is our G position. Keep your pinky on the first fret. Sorry, first fret, first string. Because then we go to the next one, which is a minor chord. I'm going to keep this pinky on. This is quite kind of uncomfortable stretch. So um, it may take you a bit of time to master this, okay? Technically speaking, this is not A minor anymore. Um, this chord is called A minor 7. Does it make sense? Because we added this note. And this note, the function of this note, is adding flattened 7 to the A minor chord. We call this A minor 7. Okay? And then the next chord will be F at 9. Let's have a look on this F at 9 chord at first. So look, let's, let's analyze what's happening. There are two ways of playing F major chord in this position okay one is full bar chord second one is half bar chord okay so to play full bar chord um what you want to do you want to position your first finger on the first fret across all six strings and then your second finger is on the second fret um third string your third finger is on the third fret fifth string and pinky on the third fret um fourth string so this is our f if you don't know how to play the bar chords um check my website very soon i will have a new course there how to play bar chords very comprehensive um analysis of the bar chords including the backing tracks and play along tracks and plenty of exercises and songs written especially to help you memorize and master bar chords so check this out okay it's coming very soon um now look so this is one of the ways to play f chord this is kind of um tricky chord to play for the beginners especially like most of the beginners really can't play this chord but um late late beginners can slowly incorporate this chord now look second way easier way to play this will be by placing your first finger on the fret number one strings one and two like this and then um my second finger is on the second fret third string and my third finger is on the third fret um fourth string okay and we play this chord from the fourth string so this is our basis for this chord and when i add my pinky here on the third fret first string i've got something which is called f at nine basically we added interval the second interval to the this one here to the chord f which creates the sound of the f at nine chord and now look once you have this pinky you don't have to really lay this first finger flat you can just position this first finger on the first fret second string like this so look finally at the end once i did all this tweaking i've got this chord look my first finger is on the um first fret second string my second finger is on the second fret third string and my third finger is on the third fret fourth string pinky on the third fret first string and this is f at nine and this is going to use in this song okay so so far you've got g a minor seven f at nine and then i'm going to play just normal c major chord which we discussed earlier but now look to go from this f at nine chord just take these two fingers finger two and three and bring them up and you got c chord and even with this pinky here this is still c major chord we are just doubling different G's here. You can always pass up your chords by laying the pinky, for instance, like this. Okay? So these are our chords. So G, 
A minor and hold the pinky, F at 9, and then C chord. All the time pinky is present in all these chords. Okay, great. We know the chords now. Now let's try to find out how to play the rhythm. So the order of the chords, um, the order of the chords in the song is G, A minor 7, F at 9, and then the C. And now look, this is how it sounds. What I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of, um, I'm not going to play the same way on all chords, the same way all the time, not like this, look. I'm going to change this, so every single time I'm going to play softer and every second time I'm going to play less of the strings. So let's say on the G I'm going to strum all strings and then look, on the second round, on the second time when I hit the second time, I'll just hit maybe string number five and six only like this, look. Or you can hit string six, five, four even, look. Just make sure that you don't hit all the time the same way. You want to create the variation, okay? This is a very cool way of um, making the rhythm sounds more interesting. I use this all the time in the music. Look, if I would play A minor chord, listen to this. Normally you play A minor chord like this. I'm using the bar chord here, but it's not, not important what I'm using here. Just listen to the rhythm. So look, this is normal way of playing. Good, but if I divide now this chord into two sections, like less notes and more notes, can you hear it? Sounds just sounds different, okay? Um, it gives you more, um, more kind of um, arrangement options, okay? <laughs> so, look on the G chord, we go strum soft, strum soft, strum soft. Four times, so be like this, one, two, three, four, and then I go to the A minor chord, and I'm going to play it the same way, but now I'm going to start from the fifth string, look. So we don't hit the sixth string here, because um, this is not really, this note in this register, in the low bass, does not belong to the chord, it may sound a bit uh, muddy, it may kind of shaky, not very, the, the, the chord will not sound in a very clear way, okay? So we try to avoid to um, hitting the sixth string. But again, if you're a beginner, if you hit the string by accident, nothing is going to happen, it's fine, just over the time, I think, I'm pretty sure you'll kind of clean up in your playing, okay? So look, A minor chord, we go. Yep, so on the A minor chord, we play strum, bass, strum, bass, strum, bass, strum. Four times, so look, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to the F at nine chord, and again from the fourth string now. Same situation, I'm just targeting different, um, different strings, okay? On the G I go from the sixth string, on the A minor from the fifth, on the F at nine from the fourth, and then on the C as the last chord, I'm going to go from the fifth. So look, on the F we go. And then the C chord. And this is our chorus. So look, let's put this together. Let's see how it's going to sound, the chorus. So check this out. So G, A minor. F at 9. C. Okay, now look. If you don't know, if you can't play really with this pinky, okay, um, and it's com uncomfortable for you, you can always replace this with just normal chords, look. So instead of using this fancy chords with the little finger, just try to play normal shapes. G. A minor, F major, like this or like this, and then the C chord, okay? What you could do on the first round, for instance, if you played the song with the singer, you could just go with the pinky, check this out, like this. And then F. And then maybe, after two times, I just go to full chords. So 
you can always mix two versions and make it sounds um, more exciting and more interesting. So I hope you like the song. So now you can pause the video and practice. You can always go back to this video if certain elements are not um, clear and um, and just watch this again. Okay, make sure that um, you don't rush with the song. Okay, this video is going to wait for you. May make sure that you have fun, you know, learning this concept.